Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Damon Talley of NASA's Digital Learning Network. We're counting down to the scheduled launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor on its STS-126 mission. And I'm here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida to take you behind the scenes. Endeavor is embarking on NASA's 27th flight to the International Space Station, orbiting more than 200 miles above us. During the 15-day mission, a well-trained astronaut crew will install several pieces of key hardware and conduct four spacewalks outside the station. More on that coming up. But first, there's no better place on Earth to get a space shuttle ready to fly than right here at Kennedy Space Center. Let's find out what makes America's spaceport so unique. Preparing any vehicle for a thundering ride into space is no easy task. It requires a prime location, massive facilities, just the right tools and equipment, and of course, a stellar workforce. For every one of NASA's human space flights, that place is Kennedy Space Center. Complex and challenging space missions begin here, amid this primitive Florida landscape where eagles soar and alligators roam. Launch Complex 39 is made up of a collection of facilities custom designed for preparing, launching, and landing the space shuttle. The Three Bay Orbiter Processing Facility is where the space shuttle orbiters spend most of their time. Each bay provides access to every square inch of the spacecraft for the technicians who prepare it for flight. With its eight acre footprint, the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, is one of the largest buildings in the world. It dominates the Kennedy skyline and is visible across Florida's space coast. In this mammoth facility, the shuttle orbiter is joined with its external fuel tank and solid rocket boosters. The shuttle's twin launch pads, 39A and 39B, have a prime beachside location, a perfect place to begin a mission. And when the shuttle comes home, its preferred landing site is the shuttle landing facility just west of the VAB. Longer and wider than commercial runways, it was specially designed for the high-speed landing of this unpowered winged spacecraft. On STS-126, Endeavour is carrying a reusable logistics module called Leonardo. It's packed completely full of supplies and equipment that will allow the station to support a six-person crew starting next year. Let's take a look. There are extra crew sleeping bunks and more exercise equipment, and a new addition to the station's regenerative life support system. The water reclamation system will recycle wastewater. It will work with the oxygen generation system to generate drinking water and breathable air for the station's residents. In addition to the slate of work planned inside the station, there will also be a lot of work outside. The mission will include four spacewalks to make repairs and upgrades to the station's two solar alpha rotary joints. These joints are essential because they allow the station's massive power generating solar panels to track the sun. It's an ambitious mission with a full timeline, but the seven member flight crew is up to the task. Commander Chris Ferguson is making his second space flight. Pilot Eric Bowe and mission specialist Steve Bowen and Shane Kimbrough are the flight's first time flyers. The lead spacewalker, mission specialist Heidi Marie Stephanie Piper, flew with Ferguson on her first space flight, STS-115. Mission specialist Don Pettit is returning to the station. He served as NASA's space station science officer on Expedition 6. And mission specialist Sandy Magnus will relieve station flight engineer Greg Shamatov, becoming part of Expedition 18. When a shuttle returns from space, a lot of work goes into refurbishing and repairing it before it's ready to fly again. Space Shuttle Endeavour's most recent mission was STS-123 back in March. I recently visited Kennedy's Orbiter Processing Facility to find out how a highly skilled team of shuttle technicians spent the past few months preparing Endeavour for STS-126. I'm here inside the Orbiter Processing Facility with Ken Tenbush, NASA Flow Director here at the Kennedy Space Center. Hey, Ken, nice to see you today. Nice to meet you. Ken, can you tell us what exactly is Shuttle Flow? Shuttle Flow is taking that vehicle from the time that it has landed it's rolled over here to the orbiter processing facility and all the processing here, along with the external tank processing that's uh, happening at the same time over in the vehicle assembly building, and then the solid rocket booster processing that's going on as well, the stacking and getting that all ready and checked out, and then bringing all of those components together in one overall integrated shuttle vehicle. And then once you're at that point, you do a, a checkout in the vehicle assembly building, roll that out to the pad, do all the checkout there, load the vehicle, get it ready for flight, and then you basically a processing flow from start to finish, from that landing all the way on through to launch. Now this is the spatial discovery behind us. Spatial Endeavor's already out of the pad. 
what happens to an orbiter in this orbiter processing facility? In the orbiter processing facility, what they do is, from the time that the, the mission is complete, they land here over at the shuttle landing facility, they roll it over here in the orbiter processing facility, and then they do all of that deconfiguration work that they need to do, check out of all the systems, make sure that they're operating normally, taking a lot of doors off, um, looking at a, a lot of different areas, the tiles need to be removed, there's a lot of tile that's damaged, and then what you're doing is you take all those components apart, do all the checkout, and then you start putting the pieces back together again. Um, you know, you're, you're, at that point, you're, you're going in and you're loading up certain things back into the payload bay. You're um, putting things back into the forward compartment. Half compartment, you may have had to change out an auxiliary power unit or something along those lines. But then what you're doing is once you're complete with all that work and you got all the engines in, the engines have to be installed, you're doing all the closeouts back of each of those particular areas, do a structural leak check when you're all finished, a weight, CG, make sure um, that's all set up properly, and then you're ready to bring the orbiter transporter in, mate that to the orbiter transporter, ready to roll over then to the vehicle assembly building. All right, so we roll over to the vehicle assembly building where we have some other components of the space shell that need to be connected, correct? Correct, exactly. The orbiter comes over. Um, at that point, you know that they've been processing in the vehicle assembly building with the external tank and the solid rocket boosters. So at that point, the orbiter is lifted and then mated to the external tank. And then at that point, they've got the vehicle all assembled, one overall shuttle vehicle. Um, and then you're, all of that is then on top of the mobile launcher platform, so you've got all that assembly all together. You can run a complete overall functional check from start to finish of that integrated assembly. And then you're ready to bring the crawler transporter in, hydraulically crank up the crawler transporter, and then roll out that entire assembly back out to the pad for that final bit of processing and readiness before you actually go to launch. So this crawler has moved the shuttles around. Didn't we have to do a roll around? What is a roll around? That what we had to do is we had to actually roll out the pad B and process out at pad B while they're ready to process over for STS-125 over at pad A. We were their rescue mission, um, is, is the way we, we can say it. Um, we had to be ready to launch within seven days of their launch because they were not going to station. They didn't have the benefit of getting those resources from station, so we had to be ready to launch quickly. After they were to launch, we were going to roll around to pad A and then finish off the rest of our particular processing flow and get that ready for launch in November. Where are you on launch day and what is it like to see your orbiter launch? I am in the launch control center in firing room four in this particular case for this launch that's upcoming. And as far as the feeling, it's just a, a, a feeling of jubilation. You know, I think about all the work uh, that went on as far as putting that vehicle together, and then I get to see it in the culmination of a beautiful launch. So, just a very exciting moment all the way around. Well, Ken, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Dan. And good luck with the launch. Appreciate it, sir. That's our show. You can follow the launch countdown live. Just tune into NASA TV or visit www.nasa.gov slash shuttle for the official launch blog. Or catch all the action during our live launch webcast on NASA's Digital Learning Network. For that, check out dln.nasa.gov. I'm Damon Talley. Thanks for watching. <laughs>